Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, weekend update. Hope everybody is having a great start to the weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a great trading week. If you have been uh, watching and following the channel, thank you very much for uh, your viewership. For all you guys who are brand new to the channel, uh, like, share, subscribe, come aboard. Come aboard. We do these uh, video updates Monday uh, through Wednesday, and again, on the weekend, so hopefully uh, you guys will get and continue to get uh, great value. So thank you very much for spending a few moments with us. So let's talk about it. Uh, if you've been watching uh, the week weekend updates or just watching the updates in the last, uh, just in the last week, we knew uh, a couple of big numbers that the bulls needed to reclaim and the bears needed to reclaim. So uh, if you've been watching this update, you know the importance of that 363 level. We talked about it uh, several times. Matter of fact, I recorded a video on Thursday, because I didn't have a video on Wednesday, talking about there was a couple of areas to watch on the queues. Uh, depending, uh, obviously, on the jobs number, we'll get to that in a second. There was that 361 level that needed to reclaim, and it needed to reclaim back the top of the channel here, of the latest interval above 363. The bulls did that. But let's back up, right? Let's back up a little bit. So going into Friday, uh, the market was uh, not in good shape, okay? Just wasn't in good shape. Uh, we've been talking about the consumer cyclical names for weeks now, how they've just been getting uh, completely beaten up. Uh, and you see the Dow just not doing well, the S&P just not doing well, that you know the have tech heavy NASDAQ uh, all over the place, right? Some, some stocks are strong, most stocks that are weak. And the question is, what was going to happen with the jobs number? And that was going to be the catalyst uh, for Friday's session. And we knew one way or another we were going to come out of this channel. You know, we talked about the bottom of the range here. On the queues, obviously, we talked about the top of the range. The question was, are you going to be prepared for both sides? And this is why we always encourage traders to, yes, set a game plan. Just have an opinion. Uh, have a bias at least going into the day. But if that bias plays out completely different from your game plan, that's why you need to be prepared on both sides, not just a, a trivial exercise. And the jobs number uh, came in stronger than expected. Uh, we all know the economy still sucks. Remember little Johnny? Right, little Johnny could, couldn't afford his little cereal, couldn't afford his uh, his breakfast. Right, so the, the economy still sucks. The consumer is not spending money, but the jobs number uh, came in hot initially. If you look at the, and we'll, we'll use the cues as a uh, as a uh, as a case study here. Initially, right, when you look at the five minute view, the first move on the jobs number, everything got hammered. Okay, uh, the cues, the Nasdaq and the S and P went down a little less than one percent. Uh, the Dow went down uh, roughly 300 points. And we're like, oh, here we go again. We're going to test the bottom of the range here. And as Chris Berman of ESPN uh, so famously says, this is why we play the game. So the market got slammed. Uh, the first rule we always talk about, and this is something we've been echoing for years, you never shorten the hole, which basically means you never short the pre-market or at the open when prices are below the previous day's range because there's a lot of emotional people saying, just take my stock at any price. Uh, again, I haven't done a personal case study, but if you have time to back test for the next two, three, four months, see what the initial reaction to a pos to a gap down is, uh, especially in, in, um, in, in a cycle that is bearish, right? You'll notice even despite the narrative that's still sell signal, sell, uh, sell driven, there's going to be a time, maturity chances are not, anybody who's shorting pre-market into the hole, anybody shorting uh, the market at the open will at least get their lunch handed to them, at least for a very short interval. Nobody knows what's gonna happen towards the end of the day. And that's what happened initially, right? We, we have That's what happened initially. Uh, all the major indexes started reversing down. Remember that Dow was down nearly 272 points and the NASDAQ was down 1% and slowly but surely, things started getting better. Little by little, right? Not all at once, little by little, and ultimately what happened, if you, if you follow along, ultimately what happened on Friday, in case you didn't trade, this was a hell of a turnaround. The Dow went from down 300 to being up 300. The NASDAQ was, went down from 1% to 
to being up 1.6%. And that was a hell of a rally. And not only that it was a, a great reversal, the bulls did their job, right? The bulls reclaimed that 363 level we've been talking about in nauseum, right? And this is at least the highest close in this formation, still below the 50-day moving average. And we'll talk about that in a second, right? But this is definitely the highest close in this whole formation. And they got rejected somewhere around the 50-day EMA, right? Now, the question is, what, well, what's more important, the 50-day EMA and 50-day SMA? It's, for me at least, right? For me at least, it's always the SMA because the SMA is above, right? It's above that channel. It's an extra supply zone uh, that the bulls need to reclaim. But they did a great job. They did an initial great job here. And now you can see, you can just see, it. even if you, have, if you don't know anything about technical analysis, but at least you can see with your eyeballs that we're very, very close. If the bulls can start compounding their effort Monday and Tuesday, right, and start reclaiming back this 50-day moving average and start building it, then we could have a measure move to the 50-day SMA. And that's where the bulls need to close, right? The bulls now... Uh, going into next week, need to reclaim and confirm uh, 366 on the Qs for a potential measured move to 368. That's the 50-day uh, SMA. And now the bulls need to close above this 368. If we can close above 368, then Christmas is back on. Santa Claus is back on. Little Johnny will get us his special K cereal, right? Everything will be good in the world, at least on the surface. So that's what the bulls need to do. The bulls need to reclaim 366, build over that level, get to 368, or probably get rejected initially, but any close above 368 potentially could start moving back uh, into upper channels, all the way up to 378 potentially, uh, going strong into the fourth quarter. The bear's job, right? The bear's job is obviously have them reject all Friday's channels and make sure it starts pushing and getting a close below 363 so we can fall back into this channel. But honestly, I'm rooting for the upside because, well, there's some really good moves and we'll talk about them uh, on Friday. So where's the big key issues, right? Uh, again, strong jobs report. We know that on uh, Tesla for the third time, for the third time in the last two weeks, uh, price got a price cut on their vehicles. Again, the initial reaction was down, right? Tesla was actually uh, getting beaten up. And you guys, if you've been following Tesla, it's been a great, great trader, right? Finally reclaimed the 50 uh, the bulls did a good job handling yesterday's uh, headline, and they closed the stock green, right? So this is three times in a row, three separate instances in a row that Tesla had some negative news come out in the stock. It deflected the negative news and closed higher and continues to build above the 50-day moving average. That's a very, very bullish thing, right? It's an incredibly bullish thing. The second stock we talked about on Thursday's video was NVIDIA, right? We talked about NVIDIA. I said, guys, look, you got to have a two-sided two game plan. But if NVIDIA reclaims the 50-day moving average, it can go, right? It can go. And hopefully if you guys, I know a lot of you guys, uh, you know, reach out to me via uh, social media, Twitter, whatever the case may be. Great job. I'm very happy for all you guys who are not in the webinar. I'm very happy that you guys uh, took advantage of it. Again, we're trying to give you uh, as many actionable ideas as possible. If you're not uh, in the webinar, obviously the webinar, we had, there's everything on the display uh, too much to even talk about, uh, but NVIDIA was awesome. Uh, after the close, uh, after the close, uh, Microsoft came out with some news that they're going to be trying to develop their own AI chip. The initial reaction, as you can imagine, uh, was you know they they hit down uh, NVIDIA and then they're springing it back up. I think it was only down like a dollar and change uh, after the close in the ECN close. But I, I think NVIDIA is going to shake off that news. What, what's the big deal? Mike, there's so many companies that are coming out with their own chips. If, if that was the headline for every single company out there, all these chip makers would be at zero right now. Uh, but I, I think, you know, based on how it closed above the 50-day moving average, uh, I still have a runner in this thing. Um, but if, if there's a, a, you know, if there's a shake off, and I think there will be, maybe you'll get a little morning weakness on the initial headline. It'll probably trap some shorts. And if it does go back to red to green and starts taking out, uh, Friday's channels, I think we could still see uh, 64, 65 uh, measure potential. But this move was uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a second as well. So going into uh, going into this week, uh, again, let's look where the SPX is, right? Uh, SPX is not anywhere close to being out of the woods. Uh, I think the NASDAQ has, is in a better shape because number one, the SPX has a lot of retailers. They've been doing crap. They have a lot of energy names. They've been doing crap. They have a lot of um, they have a lot of uh, consumer cyclical names. They've been doing crap. What's saving uh, the SPX is there's a lot of technology names. You got Microsoft that have a monster move. We'll get to the pivots in a second. 
Uh, you had Apple waking up. You had you know, NVIDIA waking up. You have a lot of names uh, in the S&P 500 that actually did very, very well. And that's kind of uh, masking a lot of the weakness that there is. But again, you can see here, we're still way below supply on the SPX. Uh, the IWM, again, just cannot get out of its own way. I understand it reversed on Friday, but look at the IWM. It looks like a, a, a you know, it looks like a, a three-legged dog. It just, it just doesn't work anymore. It's just this speculation money is coming out of uh, smaller, uh, you know, smaller cap names, mid cap names, and it's all going into, uh, you know, it's going into the momentum mega cap stock for the day. It's just reality. You know, all you have to do is look at your charts. So you know, it can't be in denial. If you're trading, especially the small and mid cap market, you kind of know uh, the lackluster actions there. Um, you know, GT, a couple of the swings that I've been, I've been holding, GT finally cracked. We talked about this potentially getting to the 1130s level on Thursday's video. I got down to basically 10% of my short, which is great, which is absolutely great. Hopefully it'll, it'll come back in. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, Cargill, Cargill, I'm still holding 75% uh, of my position. Still, I still have some um, gains on it, but not that much. MG&I, I just, it'll never crack. I think I'm coming to the, the I think I'm, I'm, I'm down like five, six cents on it. It just, it just the damn thing will never, uh, will never crack. Uh, CLVT, I'm still holding two thirds of my position. Uh, I'm up about, you know, 15 cents on it. Nothing crazy, but hopefully it'll crack uh, as well. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas going into, first of all, let's go through the pivots. Uh, let's go through the pivots and that'll give you guys uh, some ideas to watch. So this was, uh, this was uh, on, on the, the previous day's watch list. Uh, NVIDIA, again, the two big numbers. Again, we were really salivating over this thing for the last couple of days. We talked about it on Thursday's video, uh, 449 and 452 uh, confirms the 50 day. And that's what NVIDIA did. It took out 449, it took out 452, and the damn thing went absolutely nuts. Uh, went up about 10 on the day. Great, great move. Again, I'm still holding uh, a runner. Congratulations for all you guys who caught that. Uh, Amazon, we were watching. Again, we were, we were trying to get a two-sided trade, a two-sided trade in case of the jobs uh, reaction was one way or another. Uh, obviously, it, it held 24 and a quarter and never uh, and never went lower. Uh, Tesla never never confirmed. Uh, Apple, uh, 75.50 and needs to build. So here was Apple, right? Here's Apple. It took out the 75.50, this whole daily channel here and traded all the way up to uh, 78. Big, big move on Apple. It's only a little bit. It's only a couple points away from the 50-day moving average. So that should be really good as well. Uh, Microsoft absolutely exploded. Uh, Microsoft 322 uh, needs to build. So here is Microsoft, right? It took out this whole supply zone and Microsoft traded all the way up uh, to two, almost 2.30. Uh, again, we like Microsoft. We like all these stocks in continuation. If the bulls can start building uh, above back that 365 level heading into uh, the 50-day moving average. And I believe that's in R Rivian opened like at 1730s. We never we never had an opportunity for the Rivian uh, 18 short. So again, let's see if the bulls can win prosperity, right? They, they won Friday. If you look at the end of the week, despite Friday's really big rally, uh, the S&P only gained half of a percent for the week. And this is despite Friday's rally. Uh, you had the NASDAQ up 1.6%. Basically, it headed into Friday's session flat and market uh, NASDAQ went up 1.6%. So that was a close of the day. And the Dow Jones, surprisingly, right, was actually red for the week. So again, we're not out of the woods just yet. But again, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day here. We see, you know, we had to take little steps, 61, 63. Now we got to get above 65, get to 68. Above 68, I think there's a shot at a year and round. But now the question is, can the bulls actually do it? Again, to be determined. So folks, have a great, great weekend. Hope everybody does well. You know what? Let me give you guys a couple of names to watch. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names to watch. I forgot to do that in a second ago. Uh, let me give you guys some names to watch here that I like. All right. So yeah. So let's keep an eye on Tesla. So Tesla broke out this week. We already know this. Uh, it's consolidating here for the last couple of days here. Watch this top of the channel here. If Tesla starts uh, getting aggressive, maybe you get a move this week uh, to 270. Um, NVIDIA, I think, again, like I said, I think the stock is going to shake off that Microsoft uh, chip news. And if it does, it starts confirming the channels. I still think the stock sees uh, 64, 65. Uh, AMD had a great, great breakout here. Great breakout, reclaimed the five day, the 50 day moving average. Watch this thing. If it starts confirming this channel here, uh, you could see a push to. Uh, one, you know, one, you know, 109, 110, 50s. And look at a name like, yeah, I mean, look at Microsoft. I mean, look at Microsoft. Microsoft uh, got above the 50 day, got rejected, uh, got rejected at the linear regression line. All this thing needs to do, man. All Microsoft needs to do 
is get above this linear regression line. This potentially could get to 35, maybe even 40 uh, if the market starts uh, rallying there as well. So that's it, folks. That's it. If you are planning to join us uh, in the live webinar to kind of see all this stuff and all the moving parts and how cool pivots are, I look forward to welcoming you. I look forward to meeting all our new friends. And hopefully I can see you guys soon and see your career uh, develop. Guys, God bless everybody. Again, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. Have a great weekend. And with God's help, we'll see you all next week. Take care.